Hello, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, welcome back. We are going to be reading chapter six and seven in St. Germain, Mystery of the Violet Flame, written by Elizabeth Clare Prophet. So let's go ahead and just jump right in and get started with our, with our next chapter. Okay, chapter six, uh, an experience in an etheric retreat by the Darjeeling Master. The etheric retreats of the Ascended Masters serve many purposes. They are the homes of the Masters in the Heaven World, the etheric body of planet Earth. The Masters use the retreats to anchor certain energies throughout the Earth on behalf of mankind. Records of past civilizations and golden ages are stored there. And perhaps most importantly, the Masters serve in their retreats as the teachers of mankind. El Moria recounts in The Cella and the Path the following experience of souls using the violet flame to heal past life trauma in his etheric retreat over Darjeeling, India. Just to let you know that a cella in this situation is considered a student. Okay, so now we're entering uh, the etheric retreat. It is time to enter the chamber designed with a blue and gold motif where there is a screen and seats arranged in theater style. For to understand your path, your very personal path to salvation, you must have the perspective of your past and how you have created the present, both at a personal and planetary level. Come then and let us see how we shall, in the magic of the flame, discover the designs of your soul destiny. We enter the chamber now and take our places before a large semicircular screen on which there will be projected the experience of other incarnations. The group assembled here consists of unascended cellas, some of whom have an outer connection to Summit University. Others among the group are serving the will of God in their respective nations. These look forward to the day when the teachings of the Ascended Masters will be published in their language, that they might read and study in their outer waking consciousness, that which they receive here in their finer, finer bodies during sleep. One young couple taking their seats is accompanied by an, an unascended being of considerable attainment, of full stature, and indeed recognized by the Council. They will give birth to this soul in the not too distant future. Scenes of life in the in ancient Thrace appear on the screen, and we find ourselves in the marketplace of a forgotten city in the land that is now Turkey. Two unascended masters walk amidst the crowds unnoticed. The people are concerned with the activities of the day, with the purchase of food and supplies at the best prices while the vendors carefully watch the passing of coins from hand to hand to see how much the day's business will bring. A group of devotees, including some now assembled in our retreat, enters the marketplace. At the moment of their appearing, a peculiar astrological configuration aligns certain forces of hatred within the subconscious of the populace with an amalgamation of mass hatred focalized on astral planes. This interaction of force fields we portray for those present, showing also the alignment of fixed and wandering stars. These energy fields amplify both the light and the darkness and cause the energizing of certain levels of karma in incarnations, even prior to the ones now in focus on the screen. Suddenly, without warning, as if seized by a madness and a frenzy not entirely their own, certain individuals who seem to be at a random relationship to one another converge as a single entity. They act as a single unit, the mob, and with a single mind, the mass mind. They begin to pick up stones and hurl them at the devotees. The devotees are surrounded, not terrified, but calmly centered in the flame, that is the object of their worship. They shield their heads and their bodies, but to no avail. The cellas souls take leave of their finite forms and the two unascended masters standing by raise the phohetic energies of their heart chakras to assist the souls in the transition. 
By karmic law, they were not allowed to interfere with the circumstances that represented a converging of many forces and nature's demand for balance. Through their love and through their mastery, they create a force field of light, whereby the souls are taken safely to the etheric retreat of Pallas Athena over the island of Crete. Now we roll back the drama on the screen so that all may examine the interplay of forces and the lines of karma that converged in the marketplace. They see how they themselves, in a much earlier period of Earth's history, were drawn into acts of fanaticism that resulted in the death of those who retaliated that day in the forgotten city of ancient Thrace. We review the scene in slow motion. I use the diamond that I wear on the index finger of my right hand to focus the action of the sacred fire on the screen. The violet ray that descends from the heart of my presence is projected through the diamond and bursts forth as a thousand million flames on that scene on the screen. The cellas are on the edge of their seats as they watch the violet flame consume the cause and core, the record and memory, both in Akasha and in their own subconscious. The action of the violet flame intensifies in answer to my invocation, made to the I am presence of each one. In the name of the Christ self of the cellas, I invoke the fire of Almighty God to blaze forth the action of transmutation, to change darkness into light, fear and hatred into love, envy into understanding, and vengeance into victory. As violet flame angels from Zadkiel's retreat direct the energies of the flame, it forms coils of fire in the subconscious of each individual who is a party to this unfortunate interplay of energy. Coils of fire are formed like the curly shavings that fall from planed wood. These coils rise and fall, rise and fall, intensifying the action of transmutation. And now they burst into a wide circle of energy and then return to the center. All of this is the action formation of the fires of transmutation, flaming fire moving up and down and in and out, and then following the circle of the cycles of individual karma in the electronic belt, a scrubbing action, a boiling action, a bubbling and a buoyant energy. Such is the diversity of the violet flame. Scene by scene, step by step, the angels of the violet flame remove the record from the etheric body, the concepts from the mental body, the emotions from the feeling body, and the scars upon the physical matrix. Right before their very eyes, cellas of the will of God see what the glorious flame of God can do. They cheer, they applaud, and their bravos express the release of energy in their own hearts and a new freedom of the soul as this ancient record is cleared from their consciousness. And now, in answer to the cellas invocations to the violet flame, the fiery salamanders and the violet flame angels working hand in hand retrace the record of that cycle when the lines of causation were drawn in the previous existence, which is also shown as cellas learned the lesson of blindly following the blind and of failing to invoke the wisdom of the logos as a balance for the tyranny of the ego. Mankind living in the world today assume that recorded history is what it is and that it cannot be changed. They have not reckoned with the violet transmutating flame. Those who attended the viewing in our retreat of the events at Thrace saw firsthand and for the first time in this incarnation, the violet flame in action in the transmutation of the records of the past. Experience the marvelous action of the violet flame or of the violet fire, sorry. Wherever you are, as you read my words, you can begin to experience the marvelous action of the violet fire coursing through your veins, penetrating the layers of the physical temple, the bloodstream, the nervous system, the brain, pressing through the chakras, swirling through the etheric body. Passing over the pages of the written record of your incarnations on earth. Line by line, letter by letter, the flame, 
intelligent, luminous, directed by the mind of God, sets free the energies, electron by electron, of all past misuses of the sacred fire. And thus, not one jot or tittle of the law of karma shall pass until all be fulfilled in the freedom of the violet fire. If you would have the benefit of this miraculous energy, if you would be visited by the genie of the lamp of freedom, the master Saint Germain himself, you have but to make the call, for the fiat of Almighty God has gone forth, and it is cosmic law. The call compels the answer, but the call is a very special call. It is not the demand of the human consciousness, but the command of your real self, your own true being, the mediator between the I am presence and the soul. Thus you declare, in the name of the Christ self and in the name of the living God, I call forth the energies of the sacred fire from the altar within my heart. In the name of the I am that I am, I invoke the violet flame to blaze forth from the center of the threefold flame, from the white fire core of my own I am presence, multiplied by the momentum of the blessed ascended master Saint Germain. I call forth that light to penetrate my soul and to activate my soul memory of freedom and the original blueprint of my soul's destiny. I call forth the violet transmuting flame to pass through my four lower bodies and through my soul consciousness to transmute the cause and core of all that is less than my Christ perfection, all that is not in keeping with the will of God for my life stream. So let it be done by the cloven tongues of the fire of the Holy Spirit in fulfillment of the action of that sacred fire, as above, so below. And I accept it done this hour in the full power of the living God, who even now declares within my soul, I am who I am. As you begin to use the violet flame, you will experience feelings of joy, lightness, hope, and a newness of life as though clouds of depression were being dissolved by the very sun of your own being, and the oppression of the very dark, dank energies of human bondage literally melts in the fervent heat of the freedom's violet fires. Let the energies of the violet flame unlock your true self, even as they sweep away the encrustations of the synthetic self. Let the violet flame work in you the works of God. Now we move on to chapter seven, a heart meditation. As we contemplate the light of the violet flame, won't you go within the heart? Close your eyes and go into your heart. Look at your heart with your eyes closed. First, see the white light. It is a torch of fire blazing. See it about three inches high in the center of your chest. Visualize yourself in meditation, invoking the sun of your own being, that magnificent atom of self. It is your energy, and every single moment of every day and night, you are deciding what to do with that energy. Visualize the chest cavity as a brilliant sun. Take a snapshot in your mind's eye of the sun at noonday, when you look high in the heavens and you see that whirling ball of fire. It is a fiery sphere, so fiery and intense you cannot look upon it. Now visualize that sun in your heart. Enter this inner chamber and visualize yourself suspended in that sphere of consciousness. Now feel yourself following the lines of your body, from the extremities to the heart. Feel yourself pulling with your eyes, with your consciousness. Pull up the feet the ankles, the heels, up the calves, up the knees. Feel yourself pulling energy as though you were stretching your muscles, but your muscles are not moving. These are the muscles of your mind dictating your body where energy is in any given moment. This energy is moving, pulling to the heart, all flowing to the heart. Feel the energy flowing from the tips of your fingers up your arms, your elbows, up to your shoulders, to your heart. Feel your energies flowing from your head and your mind, 
all centering into the heart so that the heart is the center of consciousness, of self-awareness. As you are absorbed in this great fire, remember that God himself is centered in this fire. This is your source in this plane of matter. You must be centered in this place to begin your meditation. This is a new kind of concentration. It is letting go of the concentration of the mind. The mind is in neutral, but all energy of consciousness that is beyond the mind, the soul, the body, are flowing into the heart. Now you see the violet fire as a dot the size of the head of a pin in your heart. Let your mind's eye concentrate on that head of that pin. See it as the beginning, the vortex of the violet flame from the point of the head of the pin. Do not take your eye from that head of that pin. As you meditate on it, you will see the violet flame burst from its center and begin to weave in a clockwise direction. Now use a worded formula to further unlock the light, energy, and consciousness of the violet flame. Prayers and affirmations spoken aloud are powerful. In ancient times, it was known as the art of invocation. In our time, we have the science of the spoken word, used in decrees that are like spoken dynamic poetry, short and rhythmic. Words change the material world. As God said, let there be light and there was light. We can focus this light and become co-creators through the spoken word. As you say these verses aloud, let the words flow almost automatically as your entire concentration is on that pin. Remain centered in your heart where you see the beginning of the vortex of the violet flame. While maintaining a strong visualization, repeat the words to reinforce the energy matrix, creating with sound and rhythm. So I do have a decree here. It is a bit longer. So obviously you can't close your eyes when you're reading a decree, which is absolutely fine. You can absolutely visualize it with your eyes open. And as you get more comfortable with decrees and you learn decrees, um, some that, you know, if you, if you have favorites, I do have a shorter one that's a favorite and then a longer one. Um, the one I shared with you in the book is the one that's the most, the easiest one and, and the one that I started with and still use today. But this one here um, is a, is a decree or a heart meditation, I suppose, that they are sharing. So um, I'll share it with you. But obviously, if you were to do this heart meditation, you can use I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity God desires. Or you can look up um, violet flame decrees and choose something, um, leaving your eyes open if you want to read it. Or just saying any sort of decree or prayer out loud. I guess that's kind of where they're going with this for right now. Because further into the book, we will go, um, we will have a whole section that is nothing but decrees. And I will absolutely do timestamps on those and share them all with you so that you have them. But for right now, I will share this one with you that they are sharing. Radiant spiral violet flame, descend now blaze through me. Radiant spiral violet flame, set free, set free, set free. Radiant violet flame, O come, expand and blaze thy light through me. Radiant violet flame, O come, reveal God's power for all to see. Radiant violet flame, O come, awake the earth and set it free. Radiance of the violet flame, expand and blaze through me. Radiance of the violet flame, expand for all to see. Radiance of the violet flame, establish mercy's outpost here. Radiance of the violet flame, come transmute now all fear. Come to think of it, I do think that is the decree that they're speaking of um, prior to sharing the decree. I give you the heart meditation and then you use that decree. Um, and I actually do think there's a recording of Elizabeth Claire Prophet doing this decree with uh, people that are um, doing it along with her. And you could always put that on and um, 
do it along with her. That would be pretty powerful because even though she's not physically here, it doesn't matter. Whatever's placed there is always going to apply to you whenever you find it. So um, you could you could do it a few different ways that you, if you choose to do this. Um, so I'm going to end there. And oh, and I think they just give a brief little visual of the violet flame as well, since it's super important to visualize that around whatever it is that you are decreeing it for. So we will leave off right there and we will read chapter eight and nine in the next video. Um, violet flame for personal and world karma. That will be chapter eight. And I think we already spoke a little bit about um, using the violet flame to um, transmute things that have already been done, whether in this lifetime or others, which I think is pretty uh, phenomenal and absolutely possible. So until next time, please like, subscribe, and comment if you feel so inclined. Thank you so much for joining me. This is a, something I'm very passionate about, the violet flame, and hopefully it resonates with you too and you take uh, from it uh, whatever you will and, and use it however it works best for you. Um, I promise you will see a difference. I, I couldn't say it enough how much this violet flame has literally saved my life and opened the doors for many other things for me. So until next time, take care of yourself and those around you. I will see you again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.